We're really happy to have her back on the show. I believe it's been about six years since we had her on. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please welcome to the program, Samantha Wan. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thanks Again. for coming. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming back on. I know, yeah, we talked to you all the way back, I believe just before or after the Canadian Screen Awards where Second Gen was nominated. So. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it's just the second, the Canadian Screen Awards are the thing that brings right. me around and around. <laughs> That's right, right. That ties us all together. Yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, so Samantha, of course, this was the uh, return to in-person award ceremonies with the Canadian Screen Awards. So how was it at the show? Yeah, I think it was like very... Um, interesting like even the red carpet was a little bit different like I think they had kept it a little bit smaller some of some of it whereas like before it was like everyone was all together at the red carpet where they kept like a section downstairs so like already like the media and everything like that was a little a little different than it was before mm -hmm. um I also think that like being <laughs> surrounded by cameras and things when you've been in a pandemic is like oh my goodness what's happening <laughs> Yeah, it takes some getting used to, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But there was also an extra buzz in the crowd where you could hear everyone's like, oh, I wanted something to dress up for. Finally. <laughs> people were <laughs> so psyched for that. Yeah, I think people were getting sick and tired of sitting on their couches for this award show. So to be back yeah, in yeah. public. Yeah. There were a number of speeches where like, I've watched this on my couch for two years. Like, <laughs> I'm finally here and play that stupid music. I'm going to talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, like some people just don't like to wear track pants that often, you know, and get all warm and snuggy on their couch. You know, they need to get out. They need to put on the fancy dress and, you know, or the or the suit and tails and just go for it. Right. Like, that's it's true. I'm not one of those people, guys. <laughs> I'm in PJs on the bottom right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that's OK. PJs are welcome here. Thank Mr. You. Green is pretty much in PJs all the time. So it's OK. <laughs> it's OK. Oh, my gosh. But of course, true. you. You were nominated for uh, Love at Sky Gardens, uh, which, uh, you know, a romantic, I guess, dramedy yeah. in a way. Well, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Romantic comedy, dramedy, comedy more so. I and I feel like that. that's that's kind of over the past, like, 15 years, that's kind of become, like, Canada's true national export. I think we make a lot of those. <laughs> we it's, do. Yeah. And so this was, this was your first feature, right? Cause you had done yeah. TV before that and web, but this was like your first feature. Yes, it was. It was the first time that I was kind of moving into like a feature length, like it's a full 90, 90 minute. And it was also during the pandemic. So I couldn't even look location scout certain places. So I was like, Oh my gosh. Like it, I was like, what are, what am I, I wasn't like, what am I doing? Maybe I was a little, and I don't want to admit it, but <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. Okay. And it was honestly, it wasn't that different from second gen because we, um, on second gen, we shoot everything back to back, like it is a feature. Oh, wow. So I was expecting it to feel hugely different, but, um, luckily it wasn't actually, I wasn't trying to keep six episodes in my head at the same time. I had right. just one full movie, but you're right in Canada. Oh gosh, we make so many. And in Ottawa alone, the company I was working with, they do like 20 a year wow. and, that that was totally different to have a crew that just they all work together and literally I was getting like my makeup and hair person like two or three days before shooting they were coming off another one like it is truly like a a machine to be a part of yeah and, and as a director coming into that kind of a universe right because it, it has its own language right mm -hmm. like there is a very specific language was that something interesting for you to, to, to work with because like you know obviously in second gen and other projects that you've worked on you know, it's a, it's a, it's different than than a romantic comedy like this. Yeah, absolutely. Because like you're you're right with second gen and other projects. Like I was the creator, so I was like, okay, I want it to be like this. It's gonna be like this <laughs> in that way. Whereas like um, making your mark on like kind of like a Hallmark movie or TV movie is like, all right, how do I keep the genre everyone's looking for, but still make it unique enough or give that kind of flair? And for me, it was working with the actors and the characters to really bring out individuality out of all of them and to kind of bring a little bit of that improv and fun. Cause I think sometimes you can, these movies, you can think like, okay, we're just in this box. This is this scene and this is this scene and this is this scene. So I just wanted to make characters that you wanted to hang out with and find uniqueness out of the actors um, in the best way that I could. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, the performances are key 
Definitely. Also, uh, some very beautiful gardens as well. <laughs> yes. Some, oh man. When I feel like when the gardens are important in this particular one. <laughs> well, so, your movie's yeah. called Love at Sky Gardens. The, the, ugh. And it was like a, it was like the big thing was a big rooftop wedding. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I, only, I had, we had to shoot the wedding in half a day. Half a day. Our finale was shot in half a day, a whole oh wedding. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's that's that just sounds crazy to try and consider doing something like that. Like, because I would think you would have had like you know at least a few days to a week to shoot something like that, but a few hours, oh, like that's nuts. absolutely not. The whole movie was shot in thirteen days. Oh. Like we shot the whole the whole ninety minutes in thirteen days. Yeah, yeah, that's what I feel like has become sort of the thing now with the certain budgeted types of films, especially these TV movies, which, as I said, mass consumption. Uh, on uh, certain channels here, both in Canada and the States. Yeah. They're just getting them out there. Uh, yeah, I noticed that you guys have get, always got to work in such tight, quick turnaround. And that must, this, like for you, does that actually help because of your background on TV? Or is it more, does it add more pressure? I would say I it working on Second Gen definitely helped because we were a scrappy show. So I got really used to looking at a script and being like, oh, this is going to take too much time. Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 so that was a very fast thing that I went through the script and was like, no, no, no. Or like, we will be putting these two locations next to each other. And I think that saved our butt a lot mm. was really consolidating scenes and anything that anything that was like oh this is this is going to take a lot of time because i did another one which was a road trip movie and i was like okay a road trip movie this is a lot of a lot of different locations because it has to be and that yeah. that's where it gets really really tricky and then you pick and choose like there's a couple moments in love at sky gardens where i was like all right this is where we're going to spend some time this is where we're going to try and make it look real fancy and then the other ones you know are just your fast like let's get this Let's get this done scene. Yeah, like this is a transition scene. We got to get them here from here. Then we can slow down. Sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. And I rely a lot on two shots with my actors to like, again, get them improv so it still has some flavor to it, even though we have to move it quickly. That's kind of my my trick. Oh, now, you, you know, like we, I, I mentioned, you know, earlier when we were talking about this, like there is a, a language around this and you mentioned improv. And I'm just wondering, like, how much freedom did you guys actually have with a 13 day schedule to, you know, to, to fit some of that in there? Yeah. I mean, like when I'm saying improv, like I'm meaning like I like each act, the actors get maybe two takes three if they're lucky. And so like, I'm like, here, give me one really good take. Okay. And I'll be like, this is yours. Or sometimes there's a, there's a couple scenes in there where you'll see that we'll have only done it's, there's no cutting. It's a straight two thing. And I'll tell them like, we have this script and then I'll be like, but fill in the gaps. Like, I don't want it to be like, here's your line. Here's my line because you're supposed to be having fun. So that's when the, it will be improv in that kind of way. I we don't have time for them to fully go off off into like a new scene or something different <laughs> in a way but I'm very very like uh I'm very choosy of like okay that was good now you can have a little bit of fun here okay that was good thank you very much and let's move on and that would be hilarious way. though if they were like suddenly adding in some crazy backstory about a grandfather <laughs> that she never sees like no 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 we got no time for this <laughs> hey it can go I because I also like on second gen we worked with amazing second city artists and mm. like they can improv like for, for eons and you're like yeah. oh I have to I have to stop them to actually improv whereas like <laughs> other other actors will do a little bit of improv but they won't go too far so you're, mm. it's not too much wrangling in that well, way. that's good that's good oh my gosh <laughs> Now, of course, uh, as I mentioned, not only have you been directing, you know, movies, but you've also been directing web series. And, uh, of course, there was uh, Lady Ada's Secret Society. And I got to watch that. And, God, those kids are funny, you know? Oh, right? Yeah. Aren't they so funny? And they have been sweeping, like, the best ensemble awards at, like, all the festival. And you can see why, because they're so great together. Like the, the, the four girls, we've had them since the trailer, except our, our main lead, Tina, um, she, she was new. She was new to the group, but really like fit in quite, quite quickly. And with them as well, there's some improv for sure with, with them. Again, I do the same thing. I was like, let's get the real scene. Okay. Now you get to say whatever you want. 
just don't move your bodies differently so I can edit it. Right. <laughs> you get to say whatever you want. That's usually my stipulation. You get to say whatever you want on your single. Just do, do the same body movement. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how a show like that would have a little bit more room for improv in that mm -hmm. sense because you got such big personalities. Yes, yeah. And yeah, I, I got to say, like, again, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So it must have been, like, really good working with such young, talented actors. Yeah, and, like, it, it, it was interesting because, you know, when you work with young talent, you also have time restraints that are different from adults. And so you're like, not only do you have, not only is it going to be tight, because we shot that in 14 days as well. <laughs> Um, you're the two week champion. I'm there you just, go. I'm going to pop it out in different two weeks. guys. <laughs> Here we go. Um, but like, then you also have like extra time restraints where like, you got to be like, all right, Claire needs a subway sandwich now for an hour because we have to stop, which is good. I'm glad we have like child rule, children rules and stuff like that. But of it's, course. um, you know, it's its own, it's its own challenge. And then we were also working with, I don't know if you know this, but the headmistress is a voice of Sailor Moon. Um, really? Yes. Okay. Uh, like, it's so cool. So she was a really, really cool actress to have on, yeah, on the show, on the show with us as well. Yeah. That's very cool. That now, it's interesting you brought up the the whole time constraints with children and stuff. And I know that you're a, you're a big proponent on actually having actors and crew members and everything eventually getting to like a regular, more feasible work day. Yes, I am. You know, for the betterment and mental health. Cause it's a, yeah, you guys, again, like, again, you said it took two, you only had two weeks to make a project. So I'm guessing those are long days. And I know sometimes there are shoots that go 16 hour days and some that go 18 hour days. So. Yeah. I mean, we never did cause we couldn't afford it. Of course. So <laughs> to be perfectly honest, but even if we could, I wouldn't because I just like, you know, we've heard a lot of stories where like, especially crew who like are like driving home at night and like falling asleep because, and like not having enough turnaround time and, and like, and turnaround time for people listening, meaning not enough time to sleep at home. Like they need to have at least eight, 12 hours at home to sleep and come back the next day. And I think mental health is really important i also think that if we don't allow ourselves to have somewhat normal work schedules and by normal i say 12 hours a day instead of 16 like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a normal Still 12 slightly hours. crazy as opposed <laughs> yeah. to majorly yeah. crazy exactly but then no one can have families like no one can have other other things in their lives and i want to care about art i do care about my art a lot but i think people are part of the art and if we're not taking care of that then um, it's just not sustainable. And, and especially in these MOWs, I really learned that because the crew is just working nonstop. It's not like ours. It's not like where I do a fun project and I take a break for a while or break or unemployed, whatever we want to call it. Uh <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a break right now myself. There you yeah. go. <laughs> right, right, right. Just a little break. Um, they're going, they, they can be on a show on movies, like, like all year round. So for them, it does become a job. And so you you do actually have to give them time to go home to their family. Like, and, and I really got that. I was like, oh, I need to respect these people who need to go home to their family. We're not killing, like, yes, blood, sweat, and tears, but they got to go home to their family a little bit too. And that matters. No, for Ooh. sure. You know, and, and I, I, I think that's awesome because we, we, I've noticed, I've started to notice at least, you know, uh, in, in a bunch of different industries where like, 12, 14, 16, 18 hour days were quite common. Video game industry is very similar to this. Um, acting, obviously, uh, you know, uh, it, it just happens. And, but I've started to notice like people like yourself and others talking about not doing that, you know, like, cause, because mental health and, and a work-life balance is so important to, to everybody. Cause otherwise you're just going to burn out and then, then you're good to no one. Exactly. Yeah. We don't want people dying. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, guys, it's we're making fun things or scary things or dramatic things, but we're not <laughs> we're not actually trying to kill ourselves. That's right. No, that's right. no, we, we don't there, we don't need to chop our ears off, you yes. know, like we don't yes. need to do any of that stuff for the art. It exactly. can just it can be done. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you I, pl I applaud that. I think that's great. Do you think that that's is taking more uh root in the industry itself you know or is it is it still kind of like a you know a slow 
build with it, like people like yourself that are, are pushing towards this? It's a great question. I think I'm seeing more and more, especially during after the pandemic, more funding and things around mental health. And therefore, like work hours has to relate to mental health. So I, I do know programs are incorporating mental health more so. And I do think that during the pandemic, a lot of us, when we like had to, had to stop working for a bit, we're like, huh, this is what it's like to rest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> many of us have been like, I don't think I want to go back to killing myself that badly. <laughs> so I do feel like there's been a mental shift. I don't know how long that, I'll be curious to see how this plays out maybe three years from now. I do feel like there has been a little bit more shifting, especially like, okay, work from home, like, and things like that too have been, have been shifting since the pandemic. So it'll, we'll see if we like forget all of it in maybe three years. And I hope not. I hope not either. Yeah. That's, that always seems to be kind of the problem, right? Like, you know, we hear this thing like quiet quitting and things like that in, in other industries. It's just like, I I think you're right. I think after, you know, we get to that three, four year mark down the road, then from, you know, from the pandemic, we'll kind of see if it's still stuck. Cause that would be, Mm -hmm. I think it would be great if it did. Cause I think I, I, I love entertainment. I love that people like yourself create things, but at the same time, I want you to have like, a healthy life like <laughs> yeah yeah thank you i really felt that <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> um, and it guarantees that the, everybody's able to be more creative and continue on totally yes agreed. Uh, yeah. now of course i mentioned it off the top of the show you're you're a multi-hyphenate you're an actor you're a director you're a writer you're a producer you've worn many hats uh and uh because of that of course we get to see your your, your lovely face on camera <laughs> regularly which is great and of course you're part of the cast of run the burbs which yeah we've had andrew fung on the show we've had Rocky on the show mm-hmm. and it just seems like that set really knows how to have fun oh it's so true i really suggest for everyone you have no choice in this but i'm going to suggest it anyway for your executive your producer to be one of the actors because <laughs> they make sure your set's great <laughs> I could see yes. how that could help, you know, right? like, helpful. He's on yeah. set every day, all the time, <laughs> trying to like take the temperature. And Andrew really cares, like super, super cares. And it was kind of the same with Jason Priestley when I was on Private Eyes. Like it, it made a difference that the EP was there with the crew, with the actors. So they knew how long the days were looking. Like Andrew knows how long the days are looking. Andrew knows like, okay, guys, we need to get them some snacks, like some <laughs> extra snacks on set right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I also both uh, Raki and, and Andrew have mentioned that uh, whenever they're working with food on set, they try to eat as little as the prop food as possible so they could take it home. Have you yes. ever got to partake in the take home? I have not partaken. Well, because Raki's job is to cook. So she get like in the, <laughs> yeah. on the show. So she has so much stuff that her person that she cooks. I work at a, a bubble bay, which a, like a bubble tea place. Mm. And I, I would say the pastries, I think that I give away have been sitting out longer. <laughs> like yeah, so yeah. I, they're, they're not definitely props by now. Totally. They're definitely props. <laughs> but guys, we have a real bubble tea ceiling machine. And that's oh, pretty fun really? sometimes. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's not a cooperative actor because it takes much longer than we want it to take in a scene, and we can't <laughs> wait for it to like seal and everything like that. But it's authentic. Well, that's nice. good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I've always I find that Kathy sometimes in a scene she'll be like you know very understanding, but there's other times where it just seems like Kathy has been just tired. Is like the day is done. Let me just get the hell out of here. Why am I sitting in your your living room tasting your food? I just want to go home. Yeah. 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 She's taken on my like, guys, we should be normal humans now. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No. Yeah, totally. I think Kathy's thing, my kind of mantra with her, she always has, she's a small business owner. So she always has like a broken dishwasher that is way more important than your drama. Like (laughs) once... Like, that's kind of the, Kathy's thing. Like, whatever drama's happening around, she's like, okay, but I have taxes. Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> and and she has a heart. She's like a softy inside. She often gives a lot of advice to everyone, but very dry, very, very like, hey, let's not, like, things don't need to be complicated. And it's funny because she is grumpy. And people who didn't know me before the show 
um, think I'm grumpy. They don't know that they don't know what I'm like. Like they, they, I, I noticed it. I was like, oh, why are people being quite standoffish with me on set? And I, I didn't realize that it was because they didn't know me as, as the person. And Kathy's quite like, I don't give a, I she don't give a fuck. Do. Yeah. Don't I don't give, give a fuck. fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. And it's so empowering to be. And then I met crew and people outside the show even like our current showrunner now Nilo, and she's like i thought you were so like grumpy and like i was like what is up with her <laughs> and i was they, like they, oh they, no they know you're an actor right like right yeah yeah i just because it was like they just assumed that i was like oh she must be like how she how she is there and i was like no no no, no. i guess I, yeah. I, I i put on the the that air a little bit no, when well, I'm on it's screen. like it's like I a full so transformation though yeah. that full transformation though on screen it's like because again you're like wow. a a fun young bubbly person but as soon as kathy comes on the screen it seems like she has the temperament of like a 55 year old woman who just has seen it all and wants everybody to get the fuck out of her way <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely just like a hard working woman and I also, I actually leaned into more of um, uh, my like masculine side a little bit. I also came out as like queer in the summer. And so like there was a part of myself that I was experimenting as well that was like a little bit more grounded and slower and leaning into a certain part of me that um, I hadn't explored before. So that was also really fun for me. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, well, before we go here, um, I just want to want to ask you about something I saw on your Instagram recently. Uh, your request to all media now to be taken, your photographs and whatnot to be taken in 360 from now on. I guess yes. you really enjoyed that setup they had at Kuza. I did. I did. I was like, are we doing a 360 picture somehow on Zoom, guys? Like, this would be the greatest. I tried just, to set it up. Or, you know, I'll just like <laughs> spin around in my wheelie chair for you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that would be awesome. <laughs> honestly, technology is going so fast. It's hard to keep up with anything, but like, you know, it's I, me personally, like I've got it like locked down here. This is all you get to see. I don't, I don't know if I want everybody to see the rest of the rest of me or my house. That's the, you know what I mean? Like that's the, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit, especially in these meetings, right? Like you gotta be a little yeah. bit careful, you know? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for the blurred background and like, I'm grateful for, yeah, the, I get to wear pajama bottoms, right. uh, yeah. like in that way. But also, I don't know. Was that a bad thing to reveal, guys? <laughs> no, not no. at all. Not at all. No, that's normal. <laughs> I think, honestly, I just assume no matter what I see from, you know, the chest up that there, anybody is just wearing shorts or PJs or jogging totally. pants, like something like that, you know, hopefully pants of some of clothing of some kind. Yes. But yeah, we hope. Right? Yeah. yeah. Business upstairs, party downstairs. That's, that's right. Totally. Yeah. totally. Yeah. And that yeah. I, I that's what I always think about every time I'm on a video call. Yeah. But you never know. Like you never know. You it's... never know. But you do also have to figure out like what to do with your body when you're with right. other humans in person. <laughs> like with the 360 camera, they're like, move your arms. And we were like, Oh, okay, we have no idea what to do. <laughs> like, it just goes to the natural, like shake the arms back and forth type motion. That's... Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, that was everybody's like an old Italian man at a wedding in yeah. one of those. Yeah, things. yeah, that's a lot of like to. finger guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there you go. Well, we look forward to your finger guns popping up everywhere, <laughs> and uh, of course, also look forward to. I know that you're working uh, on an independent project. You're in development mm -hmm. on one based on your father. Yeah, dementia, dealing with dementia during the pandemic. So I know that's a real heartfelt, personal story. I'm really looking forward to when you guys get to make that. Oh, thank you so, so much. And like, thank you so much for your wonderful questions. Um, and like it, uh, I was like, I, I was good about to plug my, my social media. And I was like, don't do that. And I was like, now I'm not just going to say it anyway. I'm like, if anyone wants to follow me at the Samantha one on my Instagram to, to see stuff, they can do that. And I just really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate being here, guys. Well, we appreciate yeah, having you, absolutely. and we look forward to more things coming from you as long as you get some sleep in between. That's all yes, that matters yes. to us. Agreed. You, you guys, too. You guys, too. Pass uh, it on to the everyone yeah, else right. coming on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll make, it, make sure I mention it to the next guest. Yeah. All right. You have yourself a great night, Samantha. You, too. Bye, guys.